apps to computers to robots, businesses and consumers are hitting downtown Omaha to talk tech over the next two days. Lindsay Thies is live at the CenturyLink Center for InfoTech. Lindsay. Well, Jen, like we said before, last year was the first time at InfoTech where they had the try it on zone. And we are all about trying it on. We wanted to see what it's about. So I'm here with Ken Coulter, and you're going to tell me about this device called Oculus Rift, correct? Yeah. Yes. So um, I'll, I'll put it on and, and give me kind of the, the spiel about what this is. This looks super cool. Sure. So this is a virtual reality headset. It's still in development. This is the second version of it. It's not yet available for public consumption. However, uh, it's a great way to experience space designs. We use it at HDR all the time to be able to visualize a design during the process of development, either with the clients or internally on the architecture or engineering side. So how does it work? So what you do is you put it on. Okay. I'm going to, I'm probably going to look really goofy for this, but that's okay. That's okay. All right, so the main idea is that as you look around here, why don't you sit down? Okay. We don't want right to get there. me hurt at all. <laughs> and here's a controller right out in front of you. All right. So this left thumbstick will move you. The right one right here will look. Okay. Ooh, I'm and turning so, around, guys. So the idea is that we allow our clients and we allow our internal uh, employees to be able to visualize the space or a design uh, so that we can do the best job possible. And we leverage this technology to the benefit that typically or historically we've done a lot of we've done a lot of one-to-one -one mock-ups with cardboard or foam core and it's only existing at one site or one location. So by utilizing this technology, we're able to distribute or deploy this type of visualization globally so that everyone is able to enjoy or see this space in a high definition or high visibility so you can see it has a very realistic ability to... As opposed to just looking at like poster board. Yeah, or cardboard. Gotcha. Um, one of the other things that we did that I can show you here that's really unique to this specific environment. Okay. We wanted to be able to uh, utilize social media to experience a space or to show clients um, something that's different. So there I tweeted a specific hashtag that changed the louvers on the window. It changed the colors in the environment. It also changed the ceiling. And it took me to com complete a little bit of a different look. It did. Practical application. I love it. So well, this way we can use it for public involvement at HDR or great. for communities to be able to get some feedback on a specific design. Perfect. Well, from these cool gizmos and gadgets that we see. There are also some gadgets for a good cause that we're seeing here today at InfoTech. Take a look. Very nice. How's the little one fly? Of course, there's the neat factor. Ah! <laughs> Google employees showing off their own DIY robotic creations from Legos. Basically a quadcopter made out of connects. Race cars controlled by your cell phone. Some just fun little game. Uh, there's a lot more of that going to be going on. And 3D printers. We basically scanned the upper part of their body so we'll be able to, you know, print off their face. But for Creighton Senior Adam, Infotech is all about the tools behind the toys. A lot of people can use them to print, you know, toys or desk trinkets, but, uh, you know, there's a much more practical side. Cool. Have you seen a printer before? Adam is a research assistant for Dr. Jorge Zuniga of Creighton University. He improved online plans for mechanical 3D printed hands like these. You can kind of get a feel of how the movement will work. To date, they've given hands, called the Cyborg Beast, to 20 local children born with missing hands. The recipients pay nothing. Research grants cover the cost, only about 50 bucks to print. And while the bright colored plastic, the same kind used for Legos, does make it feel more like a toy. For the people in this room, it's about the mechanics behind it and how that can make a difference. I mean, I've always been uh, interested in, you know, cool technology and, you know, the thought of being able to use this to help others and, you know, and their families, um, it just adds to it. So coming up a little bit later on in the show, I'll show you some of the tech trends that are really big here. InfoTech continues tomorrow. Jen, we're going to send it back to you. Very cool. Thanks, Lindsay. I love those glasses she had on. I know. A lot of fun gadgets yeah. there. Tons of fun. You have fun gadgets to determine what's going on in the <laughs> yeah. forecast. Fun. Well, I was going to show.